Hello everyone, welcome back. More and more organizations are now looking at building in-house sustainability teams and hiring ESG experienced talent. ESG and wider sustainability aspects are also becoming an increasingly integral part of the wider business strategy. So let us now briefly look at how organizations can develop their ESG strategy. However, before beginning to understand as to how an ESG strategy can be prepared and implemented, let us first understand and quickly touch upon why is it necessary to have an ESG strategy in the first place. As we have seen, ESG is soon going to be a mandatory aspect for most of the organizations from being an optional consideration at this point in time. Most of the businesses have now come under the radar of investors and regulators for considering the environmental impact of their business operations. Additionally, there is increasing pressure from consumers, employers, public and the communities at large to incorporate sustainability aspects into their overall agenda and the business operations. Research from the Science-Based Target Initiative talks about how various stakeholders are looking at ESG and wider sustainability aspects of a business. For example, almost 77% of shareholders are now considering it their responsibility to hold companies accountable on climate change and inequality. Similarly, 88% of employees within the 25 to 40 year old range say their job is more fulfilling when they can positively impact social and environmental issues. From a community and a society perspective, 40% of the people in US say that they would boycott a company for being not being eco-conscious. All these aspects tell us that for an organization now embedding ESG and wider sustainability aspects into their day-to-day -day operations is becoming a business imperative. Additionally, impact from global problems like climate change, resource shortage, rising inequality are also creating various risks for businesses which require proactive assessment and mitigation measures. Therefore, it is now a business requirement for organizations to start embedding ESG aspects into their wider business strategy for risk mitigation purposes, as well as to capitalize on various value creation opportunities that ESG and sustainability present for their business. Setting up an ESG strategy involves five steps which can range from identifying irrelevant ESG parameters to setting specific targets, implementing those targets, monitoring and reviewing progress, eventually looking at the reporting side. Like with any other business strategy, setting up an ESG strategy can be a complicated task as it requires assessing the end-to-end -end business operations as ESG and sustainability aspects are relevant in some form or the other for all functions within an organization. A proper team of technical and cross-functional involvement is required alongside additional subject matter experts depending on the business operations. The starting point would be to identify material ESG aspects and areas of business, followed by a thorough baseline assessment to then develop goals and targets for the wider business and individual functional teams and working out implementation measures to achieve those goals and targets. Ongoing monitoring and review will be required to identify any gaps and proactively address such gaps to ultimately achieve the desired outcomes and get us a step closer 
to the specific targets and goals that we have established. Periodic reporting will also continue throughout the course of the ESG strategy implementation journey for the organization. Existing frameworks and approaches, for example, SMART approach for goal setting purposes can be considered as part of the wider ESG strategy development and implementation process. In the next slides, we will discuss each of these steps in more detail. The first part, as we have seen, is setting up for setting up an ESG strategy is to identify the relevant parameters for your business operations. It involves identifying key ESG matrix and key performance indicators or KPIs and areas which matter most to the organization. After having found out the list of all material topics and KPIs, a materiality assessment is ideally suggested to identify the parameters having the most financial and operational impact on the business. Guidance and recommendations from various international bodies like the SASB can be used for undertaking such materiality assessments. For example, for an FMCG company, it can involve the availability of key raw materials or the packaging activity. For a manufacturing entity, it can be the amount of water consumed or the waste generated or the overall greenhouse gas emissions from its operations. Or from a social perspective, the health and safety aspects of its end-to-end -end activity. And for a bank or a financial institution, a key ESG matrix or a KPI can be the data privacy or security of the people that it banks and lends to and the wider reach of its products and services for a better financial inclusion. Involvement of all relevant external and internal stakeholders, that is shareholders, management, employees, consumers, and other value chain partners is essential for better planning and for adopting a holistic approach to the ESG strategy development process. It is important that inputs and buy-in from all these key business stakeholders are obtained for maximizing the reach and the impact of an organization's ESG strategy. The second step, involves setting targets and KPIs. After undertaking a materiality and a baseline assessment as part of the step one, the second step involves setting targets based on the findings of those assessments. Across all material areas identified, goals and targets can be set to advance an organization's ESG journey. These goals and targets will also depend on the potential impact of the targets, the costs to achieve those goals and targets, as well as the timeline. As we've briefly touched upon, goals can be set with the help of a smart technique. That is, goals that we have set should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Goals should be such that they could be measured easily and without any practical challenges. The timeline for achieving the goals must be realistic and reasonable and not too far in the future. Meaning the target should and can be achieved within a reasonable time. The third element to setting ESG goals and targets is adequate data collection and the quality of data, which is just as equally crucial. Additionally, data must be obtained from authentic and reliable sources. And the baseline numbers and eventual targets and goals established 
will be based on the data availability and the collection aspect within an organization. It is therefore extremely important for organizations to establish a robust non-financial and an ESG focused data collection and management process in place as part of developing an ESG strategy. The third step is working out action plans to implement the targets and goals that have been set as part of the second step. This will require collaboration between various departments and functional teams, including with subject matter experts and wider business stakeholders as relevant. The key to creating practical and actionable action plans is effective collaboration of various internal and external stakeholders. Technology can also be leveraged during the entire implementation journey to make the action plans more streamlined and to facilitate engagement and collaboration with various business stakeholders. Technology can also be used to compile and analyze data points as well as to measure the effectiveness of the implementation process over a period of time. The fourth step to develop an ESG strategy involves monitoring and reviewing the progress made to date. Ongoing review and monitoring will help in identifying any implementation challenges, gaps in progress or any deviations from the established strategy. Proactive mitigation measures and initiatives can subsequently be undertaken to bring the implementation process back on track to address any gaps and deviations that we have identified or to revise the strategy and the implementation plan as required to factor in additional aspects which previously might not have been considered. Focus and improvements on areas which are lagging and where there are some severe gaps can be specifically undertaken to ensure effective outcomes and alignment with the overall ESG strategy that has been developed for an organization. The last step as part of an ESG strategy journey is to report the ESG information and the progress to date. The last step involves disclosing the information gathered throughout a particular year or a timeline that has been set for an organization and where possible, making it public so that investors and other stakeholders can get access to this information. The reporting can be done through various standards and frameworks available globally. Or in case of any regulatory mandate, the template and the process prescribed by the regulatory mandate can be followed. Disclosures and reporting of the ESG information can also be considered on a voluntary basis as well. So these were the five steps involved as part of developing an organization's ESG strategy. Let us now look at the overall benefits of having an ESG strategy in place within an organization. Through a thorough materiality and baseline assessment, various opportunities for improvement, particularly in terms of resource usage, can be identified. Gradual improvements over a period of time can lead to cost reduction and increased efficiencies for organization, as we have previously seen in the case of AB InBev, the beer manufacturer, as well as the private equity-backed portfolio company that achieved an improvement in its operating margins. ESG strategy in place can therefore help an organization in achieving cost reduction. Having an ESG strategy in place is also critical from a risk management perspective. We have discussed this in more detail as part of the value creation section. 
that proactive focus on ESG and wider sustainability aspects help in better managing any risks from extreme weather events and other global problems that we've discussed. It helps in reducing any supply chain disruptions and enables organizations to be better prepared for any financial or associated reputational risks. ESG strategy is therefore also a great risk mitigation tool. Focus on ESG aspects can help organizations generate positive impact on the communities and the environment alongside making business processes more sustainable. This can help in increasing the brand image of an organization and enhance its reputation, which it can subsequently leverage for having a competitive advantage. Many brands are now using their sustainability credentials, be it making their operations carbon neutral, getting an international accreditation like B Corp, etc., as part of their marketing efforts to appeal to and reach out to a wider and more conscious customer base. Over time, this helps in enhanced transparency as well and in building a better reputation amongst the wider stakeholders of the business. The last advantage of having an ESG strategy is improved performance. This is broadly linked to the first point that we've discussed on identifying opportunities for cost reduction and to grow the top line by launching and releasing more ESG aligned and sustainability products and services. Through uh, embedding ESG aspects within the business strategy, uh, areas to improve across the end-to-end -end value chains uh, can be identified, eventually leading to reduced raw material usage, waste, or re reduction in the carbon footprint. Opportunities to tap into newer markets by launching new products and services can also be capitalized on. A safe and healthy workplace can also motivate workforce and improve the overall productivity of the business. All these aspects add up to improve performance of an organization. And over time, a robust and a holistic ESG strategy can help achieve higher valuations for the business and lead to significant benefits for all the key stakeholders of the business. Thank you, and we hope this will help you now in working with your organization in taking the first step towards developing a robust and a holistic ESG strategy for your organization and working out practical implementation steps to achieve the targets and the impact that you want for your organization.